Hi, welcome to our talk, Hashtag Feedback, Applying Lessons Learned from Secondary Education to Higher Education. I'll start by telling you what was done at school level and then I'll pass you on to my husband to talk about what was done at university. So at school level we've done a lot of work um, about feedback. We know it's very important to pupils, we know it can help to, to improve and we can use that as next steps to inform our lessons. We have also found it's most effective when it's a comment and not just a grade. A lot of work by John Hattie and Don, Dylan William about this. But we do know that that is time consuming. Marking is one of the things I always mentioned for being a teacher and it does take a long time. So I needed a way to provide personalised constructive feedback for every pupil without it taking more time than required. Really, you would like the pupil to spend more time on their feedback than the teacher. So I teach physics. At school level, our questions tend to have a right answer. So there is a danger that if someone just gets it all right, it's very difficult to find feedback for them. But at the same time, a lot of marks are lost every year by students making simple mistakes. They are rushing at it, especially in exam conditions, they can just forget what we've been telling them. So they lose marks by forgetting units at the end of their, their questions or else they make simple um, arithmetic errors. So it's important that they learn some exam technique to maximise the marks. And if we work on that all through the year, it probably gives them the best chance of getting as many marks as they can from the exam. So this was my focus when creating the feedback system for my higher class. Here's the general categories of errors I see every time I mark a class set of homework in physics at school. And these same errors occur in the tests and the exams. At school level in the SQA, they can lose a whole mark every time they forget a unit in their questions. And they can lose all the marks quite easily from the start if they've made a math error or they've written down a formula wrong. So what I did was I assigned a numerical hashtag to each of these errors. Okay. There was also a last one as well that I could write a comment on if they'd done something that was separate or if it was more specific to the topic we were doing at the time, for example, uncertainties or if we were using dynamics questions, anything like that. So when I was marking, I would write the appropriate hashtag at the bottom of the pupil's work. Then we'd go over the work in class as a whole class. And the pupils knew what each hashtag meant and it was up to them to find the error in their own work. I wasn't pointing it out directly to them and they had to correct it for the next time I looked at their jotters. This put the onus on the pupils to spend time engaging with feedback and actually using it to their own practice. This is a better time of their use, of their, a better use of their time and a better use of my time compared to writing check units 20 times every week and feeling there was no improvement. Overall, I would hope that would mean they are picking up more marks in their exam because they're not making some of these errors. So now I'm going to pass on to Peter to tell you how he's used a similar system at university level. So we've been receiving um, over the past few years an ever-growing request for feedback from our students, um, specifically in my experience for our introductory level one physics class, which is 250 students each year. And we had been struggling to find a way to give them regular, detailed, personalised feedback that didn't require an awful lot of, of work um, because we didn't have the time and the manpower. Um, but the hashtag feedback system that Christine's just described seemed like a, a quite efficient way of providing assessment, sorry, feedback on assessment uh, without creating an enormous workload. So what I tried was we introduced weekly assessments, five in each semester, um, so that would be two over the academic year, using questions from the textbook, and what you can see there is just an example of the sheet we would give the students. Uh, there'd be 10 marks available each week, and overall it represents 5% of the course grade for the year. Um, we felt it was important to give credit, because then the students would take it a bit more seriously, but not too much, because um, the, we didn't want to overweight it to make it too stressful. Students would submit their attempts on a weekly basis. We did this through the lab class, just for sort of administrative simplicity, really. And what you can see there is an example of the feedback that we would, the, the homework they would submit. Uh, I would mark it, um, and I would then put hashtag feedback on it. So instead of having to write out repeatedly mistakes, just as Christine's described, I could put the hashtags, which was a lot quicker. 
And basically, I could go through a group of about 50 homeworks in about an hour. So it was quite an efficient way of doing the marking. We would then give the work back to the students the following week, and they would get some group feedback on the performance. It would look something like this. Um, so they were getting a combination of personalized feedback through the hashtags, and then a bit of um, group feedback. A little generic, but it gave them a general idea of how well they'd done overall. Now, when it came to deciding what the hashtags were, uh, basically, we just, uh, to, can, they evolved as time went by. When we sat down to mark the first homework, the first mistake I found became hashtag one. So the first happened to be that the first mistake uh, was that somebody had done a calculation and quoted an entire calculator screen worth of decimal places. So the first hashtag became too many decimal places or significant figures with the suggestion to always take guidance from the numbers used in the question. The next mistake that happened to a co-op was that somebody put the wrong number into another calculation. So that became hashtag two. So over the first two or three weeks, I arrived at a series of 11 hashtags. And what we did was once the list was complete, we posted this list in the lab. And so when students got their homework back, they could see the hashtag, then they could go and look at the list and see what the issue was. So again, they were having to engage with the feedback. They couldn't just glance at it, throw it away and never think about it again. As you can see, it's a slightly random list, but that's because it evolved gradually over um, the time that we were trying out the questions. For instance, number 11, provided an incorrect factual answer, is only last because the types of questions we had didn't have a state of fact question until week three. Um, the order doesn't matter. We stuck with the same order all through the year, so the students got the hang of which um, hashtag meant which. And as you can see there, some of these are similar to what Christine's already talked about, using the wrong number, forgetting units. Um, because sadly, even though they should know by university level, students still make the same recurring mistakes. Now, what are we going to do with this? Um, well, in the year ahead, as may be the case at your own universities, um, more or less all of our teaching is going online. So we're going to continue to use these revision homework exercises, but rather than having students issued homework uh, sorry, handing in homework on bits of paper. We're going to do everything electronically. We'll use our virtual learning environment, which is called Moodle, and students will submit their file. They'll be marked online. They'll be returned to the students online. But we'll be able to do exactly the same thing. We'll be able to type or handwrite those hashtags onto their documents, depending on what technology the marker has available. Um, we'll probably reorder the hashtags into groups this time because we're starting afresh. And what will be different is we'll issue these hashtags at the very beginning. So the students will hopefully avoid these common pitfalls before they actually start making those errors. In terms of the group feedback, rather than giving them sheets of paper, we're going to do pre-recorded um, Zoom videos where we'll outline the solutions of what, uh, what they should have attempted. So overall, um, what uh, we're trying to show here is that, well, first and foremost, um, there is a lot that secondary uh, unit higher education can learn from secondary education. Um, a system that was tried in a small class of 20 scales very easily to a class of 250. Um, it provided an efficient way of providing personalized feedback to students. Um, it can be done hard copy, but it can be equally done in an online model. There's no difference, for, there's no reason why it can't be one or the other way. It's also discipline agnostic. I don't know if that's the right phrase, but it's not specific to physics. It's not specific to chemistry. Um, some of the hashtags might be the same in both subjects, but you develop your own list. Um, so hopefully you find that useful and this is a system you might be able to consider deploying to provide your own classes with feedback uh, in uh, an efficient fashion. Thank you.